now let's consider such a cascading a two stage or a second order bandpass filter can be constructed by cascading a second order low pass filter with a second order high pass filter the input is given as shown here to a two pole low pass filter or a second order low pass filter having a characteristic corner frequency say f2 and the output of the stage is injected to the input of a two stage high pass filter or two pole high pass filter having characteristic corner frequency say f1 the role of this one as i have already told you it will allow all frequency less than f2 to pass through it so that 0 to f2 will be allowed by this one and this will allow all frequency above f1 to pass through it so that 0 to f1 will be attenuated and f1 to f2 will be allowed to pass through this one so that in the overall filter response a band in the range from f1 to f2 will be allowed to pass through it this response corresponds the response of this low pass filter and this one corresponds the response of the high pass filter so keep in mind to construct a wide band pass filter the corner frequency of the low pass filter f2 must be higher than the corner frequency of the high pass filter in the circuit say f1 the reverse cascading is also possible you can give the input to the high pass filter and the output of the low pass filter can be taken out for a band pass and band reject filter of course there will be this parameter referred to as bandwidth this is the range of frequency that is being allowed to pass through it of course bandwidth will be equal to f2 minus f1 where f2 and f1 are those upper and lower cutoff frequencies respectively at which the gain is 70.7 percentage of the maximum gain or 3 db less than the maximum gain in decibel and a quality factor is defined given by f0 the central frequency divided by bandwidth if this value is less than 10 it indicates that the bandwidth is very large then such a filter is referred to as a wide bandpass filter and if this is equal to or greater than 10 this indicates that the bandwidth is very small and such a filter is then referred to as a narrow bandpass filter and there are some specialized <coughs> circuits with the help of which narrow bandpass filters can be constructed and you can prove that this central frequency will be always the geometric geometric mean of f1 and f2 that is f0 equal to square root of f1 and f2 <coughs> so we conclude a bandpass filter passes all signals lying within a band between a lower and upper cutoff frequencies and essentially reject all other frequencies beyond or outside this specified band so the actual filter response will be like this and here the increase of gain will be depending upon the order of the high pass filter present in the uh, wide band pass filter and the roll off of gain in the other extremity will be depending upon the order of the low pass filter used for cascading in order to construct a band pass filter and the ideal filter response will be like this that you can assume by increasing the number of filtering units or by increasing the order of the filter bandwidth as i have already told you is the difference between the upper and lower cutoff frequencies and is the range of frequency being allowed by the band pass filter and the central frequency will be always the geometric mean of the upper and lower cutoff frequencies this you can prove by taking the case of active resonant band pass filter being demonstrated in integrated electronics by milman and halkias of course i am skipping it since it is not demanded as per your syllabus however it's a very good analysis and it's readable too i prefer you people to read it or present it as an assignment from this module now let's move on to band stop filter 
for notch filter actually a very narrow band stop filter is often preferred to as a notch filter and a band stop or band reject or notch filter can be obtained by incorporating a low pass filter and high pass filter in this manner you have the input given common to a low pass filter and a high pass filter connected in parallel and the output of this low pass filter and high pass filter are taken and given to a summing amplifier an op amp inverting summing amplifier as we have already seen i think in the next slide i will have that practical configuration so i am not going to draw it here so by connecting a low pass filter and a high pass filter in parallel and summing the output of these two filters will give you rise to a filter response like this here what we have done is that we have taken a low pass filter having corner frequency f1 which is less than the corner frequency of the high pass filter having let's say corner frequency being labeled as say f2 let us assume that we require to obtain a filter response which is such that all frequency between 3 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz needed to be omitted so when the input frequency is less than 3 kilohertz it must be allowed to pass through it and if the frequency exceed 3 it must be eliminated so that this shall corresponds to a stop band and if the frequency is above 5 kilohertz it must be allowed to pass through it and if the frequency is less than 5 kilohertz but greater than 3 kilohertz it must be allowed so here you will have a low pass filter response and here you require a high pass filter response just converse to the case of a wide band pass filter so what we may do is that we will take a low pass filter having a low corner frequency f1 and a high pass filter having a comparatively larger value of corner frequency f2 say 5 kilohertz so this has a corner frequency 3 kilohertz once the frequency reaches 3 kilohertz for the input signal it will show its low pass filter response all frequency above 3 kilohertz will be eliminated and this one will offer its high pass filter response when the frequency of the input signal is above 5 kilohertz and all frequency below 5 kilohertz will be attenuated so i am giving let me give a range of frequency 0 to 1 megahertz from the input this is a low pass filter having corner frequency 3 kilohertz it will allow all frequency from 0 to 3 kilohertz to pass through it and all frequency from say 3 to 1 megahertz will be attenuated so for this one 0 to 3 will be allowed to pass through it and this part will be eliminated and for this one that get all frequency from 0 to 1 megahertz it will allow all frequency less than 5 kilohertz to pass through it and will attenuate all frequency above 5 kilohertz so this part will be sorry sorry it will attenuate all frequency less than 5 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz coming to it however it will pass all frequency above 5 kilohertz to pass through it so this part will be eliminated as long as the high pass filter is concerned so for the high pass filter you will have all frequency from 5 kilohertz to say megahertz e these two outputs are being summed here using a summing amplifier so that the filter response we obtain will be like this it will be devoid of all frequency in the band range from 3 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz however it will allow all other frequencies to pass through it here we have shown this schematically this is a high pass filter having a characteristic corner frequency say fl and this is a low pass filter having a characteristic corner frequency say fh and these and the inputs of oh sorry outputs of these two stages are being 
summed here using an op amp inverting summing amplifier then it will show a filter response like this and we have taken typical values of fh and fl as a 200 hertz and 1 kilohertz then it will eliminate the band from 200 hertz to 1 kilohertz however allow all the remaining frequencies to pass through it as shown by two pass bands and this range of frequency being rejected and this kind of a filter is referred to as a noise filter band stop filter is a filter which its operation is opposed to that of the bandpass filter as we have seen because the frequencies within the bandwidth are rejected and the frequencies above fc1 and fc2 are allowed to pass through it and this opposite nature we have shown in the case of the uh, lower and upper cutoff frequencies as well and this is the ideal response and actual response bandwidth for a band stop filter is the band of frequency between 3 db points just as in the case of the bandpass filter response so this is the bandwidth here however bandwidth of the stop band being mentioned because the purpose of a band reject filter is to reject this particular band and that's about bandpass and band reject filters now there is one more topic being added in your syllabus that is op-amp narrow bandpass filter with multiple feedback that is done in view of the practical experiments i prefer you to submit that also as an assignment you can refer this uh, bandpass filter with multiple feedback in electronics and integrated circuits by op-amps and linear integrated circuits by RA gay quad now let's move on to the next topic for next applications in which we make use of the positive feedback of the operational amplifier we already know that op amps are high gain direct coupled amplifiers so that their gain will be typically very large even in open loop configuration so that even if a very small signal is being applied for amplification there is a strong possibility that the output will be switching into saturation so most often they will be operated with a negative feedback and using negative feedback there are two predominant configurations these are referred to as the inverting amplifier configuration and non-inverting amplifier configuration and we have already seen all the cases of this inverting non-inverting amplifier configurations and the various applications of inverting as well as non-inverting amplifier configurations inverting amplifier configurations include the applications like summing amplifier scaling averaging amplifier or adder subtractor integrator differentiator etc and we have left one topic that is voltage to current converter we will see voltage to current converter towards the end it is a circuit such that in the input it has a voltage and in the output it will produce a current through a load resistance anyway we will do it towards the end of this discussion now let's move on to yeah before that we have various applications of non-inverting amplifier that was in terms of the filters now let's move on to the case of op amp being used with positive feedback it's easy to demonstrate positive as well as of course negative feedback we have already seen positive feedback also in the case of operational amplifier what you have to do is that part of the output energy must be taken using a potential divider and this part of the output energy must be injected to the non-inverting terminal like this so you have two resistances r1 and r2 connected to output voltage point 
portion of output across R2 will be injected to the non-inverting terminal as possible.